happened, I think we should uh, start. Um, you know how these uh, sessions are. I will uh, ask uh, the presenters to stay within five minutes, no more, because what is important is the interaction with uh, the journalist. And uh, as for the journalist, uh, there are the ESC spokesperson who are more than happy to um, talk with you afterwards. And these are Professors Nicolas Danchen and Professor Franz van der Werf. And you can contact Kate Rees at the ESC press office if you need the help of these persons. And uh, so we start immediately with uh, uh, Dr. Marco Vergimigli, who comes actually from my department. He will report on the Prodigy trial. And if you want to know more, you read all the title because it's uh, <laughs> extremely long. Thank you very much, Professor Ferrari. Good morning, everybody. So there are currently <clears throat> two identified drivers for the duration of dual antiplatelet therapy after standing. From one side, indication to the procedure, unstable presentation, non-STEM is STEMI across the board. To the other side, the type of implant and stand. DS implantation, irrespective of which type of DS, should prompt at least 6 to 12, or at least 12 months duration of DAPT, according to the European and American guidelines, respectively. However, if you take the time to browse the text of these two documents, it will be very clear that there is a high degree of uncertainty with which these recommendations were put forward. Data suggests that certain patient population, high risk for thrombotic events, patients after first generation DS implantation may benefit from prolonged DAPT beyond one year. In the same doc, three lines below, you read recent data suggests that DAPT for six months may be sufficient because late and very late stent thrombosis correlate poorly with discontinuation of DAPT. Now, going to the American guidelines, they say if the risk of morbidity because of bleeding outweighs the anticipated benefit afforded by therapy, earlier discontinuation should be considered. And so what is the anticipated benefit? Data favoring prolonged DAPT after DS implantation is overall limited, and so far two registries have been systematically quoted by all American and European guidelines. From one side, the Duke registry, we showed an impressive 50% reduction of death or MI in patients who were kept on clopidogrel for two years as compared to patients who discontinued the treatment for six months. And the basket late went, went pretty much in the same direction. After DS implantation, discontinuation of clopidogrel six months was increasing again the composite endpoint of death or MI in the subsequent year by 73% compared to bare metastent treated patients. So against this background, we set up uh, our study, which we called Prodigy, to truly investigate whether 24 month DAPT duration was better than six months. This was an investigator-driven study which was conducted under the chair of cardiology of the University of Ferrara. Three sites in Italy recruited patients between December 2006 and December 2008. At the time of intervention, patients got randomized to these four different stand types, Bermetal stand, Endeavor Sprint, Taxus, Excience V. This was based on the willingness to ensure that the 10 types were perfectly balanced between the two main pharma groups. Therefore, at 30 days, eligible patients were randomized to prolong the APT 24 months versus up to six months. We recruited 2013 patients at the time of PCI. 1,970 patients were eligible at 30 days for subsequent randomization, and the loss to follow up were overall quite minimal. Compliance to Colpidogrel already started to diverge in a significant manner between the two groups at six months, and this was entirely due to bare metal stand treated patients who discontinued the treatment before six months in the short term DAPT group, and this was as per protocol. This was left to the discretion of the treating physician. Subsequently, adherence to the assigned study treatment was very high in both groups, over 95% during the two year follow up. The primary point of our study was overall death, MI or CVA. And at two years, this was observed in 10% of the patient in the short, 10.1% of the patient in the long term DAPT group, p value 0.91. 
death from any cause was identical, 6.6. Composite of death or MI did not differ. Focusing on events occurring after six months, again, there was no difference, if anything, a no significant 11% difference favoring the short duration of treatment. From the safety part of the story, we did see differences. The key safety endpoint was the very recently proposed bark bleeding <coughs> classification. Type 2, 3, or 5 were basically two times higher in patients randomly allocated to receive long-term DAPT. This finding was consistent across different type of bark bleeding events, also consistent when the TIMI classification was used, and importantly, the need for transfusion were cut by 50% in patients receiving short-term DAPT. So our study failed to show that 24 was better than 6. Of course, we cannot rule out the possibility that a smaller than anticipated benefit may still exist. However, as you see here, all safety and point were clearly favoring short DAPT duration. So we concluded that probably current recommendation may have overemphasized the benefit over the risk of prolonging aspirin and clopidogrel. Thank you. It's important to emphasize that this was not a sponsorized study and it was conducted by our university and you can see why sometimes we have a lot of study to demonstrate that something is very good. It is more difficult to have sponsorization to demonstrate that something perhaps is not necessary. But these spontaneous studies, I believe, are important. Questions? No, you, you don't go away. Go, go away. Yeah. Questions for Marco. Yes. Um, I, hi. This is a, I, I have a question on Peggy Peck med page today. I'm wondering, do you have any data? Uh, did, you, did, you, did you do an analysis on stent type, um, on the specific stent type in terms of, of the outcomes? Um, so on Zions, on, on Taxus, on Endeavor, and then of course bare metal. So do you have that breakdown? Yeah, so we are going to show in, a, in a two hours the breakdown of drug eluting stent versus bare metal stent. We have not analyzed the data into the four different stent types. We have just pre-specified in the main paper to look for DS versus bare metal stent and there is absolutely no signal of heterogeneity. If anything, the point of estimate is even slightly favoring in the DS group the short and opposite trend in the bare metal stent. But the p-value is very far from being significant, so I would caution you to overemphasize this finding. Other questions? Sherry Boshert, Cardiology News. Um, you say that the uh, uh, guideline recommendations based on registry data say that at least 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy should be pursued after impl implantation of a stent. Uh, those are the recommendations. Is that still commonly what's done? And second question, I know this was a university-sponsored study, but do you have any um, disclosures of conflicts of interest? Sure. I, have, do, I do have a personal disclosure, and I think I have provided my personal disclosure in the press uh, release that I provided you with before. Otherwise, I will easily give you my personal uh, disclosures. The study was completely conducted by University of Ferrara and did not receive any funding from any industry, pharma, or device company. With respect to your four question, it's difficult for me to foresee how the guideline committee will change the recommendation ba based on this study. But now it's becoming a consistent trend. It's not the first randomized study going in this direction. Uh, at ACC last year, the real late by a group from Korea, Professor Park, presented very similar data, even a trend disfavoring for mortality the very long duration of DAPT. And ACC this year, the excellent study was presented again by a Korean group, more or less giving very similar information, even if I have to say that I've not seen this paper published yet. So I'm aware of three different studies giving more or less the same type of uh, findings. So I don't know how the guidelines will, will, will adapt their recommendation based on those findings. Other question? Yes? Oh, hi. Uh, Sue Hughes from the Heart Talk. Talk. Um, do you think there's enough patients in this trial to actually make a definitive recommendation on the results? Well, it's very difficult to say that we can make a definitive recommendation. We can exclude with 95% confidence that the anticipated benefit, which is a 40% relative risk reduction of death, MI or CVA, is not there. 
we cannot exclude that the benefit of prolonging the APT may be smaller than what we have anticipated. And if you look at the upper boundary of our confidence interval, we can reasonably say that, if anything, the benefit cannot be greater than 29%. However, if you look at the safety profile, we have seen more than 50% increase of bleeding complications. So this single study is suggesting that the risk of bleeding is, for sure, on a relative basis, higher than the possible benefit for ischemia that we have not seen, however. Yes. Hi, I'm, uh, Melissa Walton, Shirley from theheart.org. A few years ago, we saw a study that showed approximate 3.8% SAT rate with discontinuance of these uh, medications at about three years. So what do you think has changed in the past few years with regard to the reduction in SAT? Is it what we're using in the cath lab at the time and those regimens, are they different? Or, you know, I, I see patients that stop their medication at a year and they come in with an SAT occasionally. So can you speak to that? Yeah, I think the key point here to be emphasized is that one thing if you have a patient who has to discontinue the treatment and then he has a cardiovascular event, one thing is if you randomize the patient to discontinue the treatment at a specific time point. If you randomize the patient, the patient has to stop medication because of the study. If the patient is for any other reason discontinu discontinuing the treatment, you have also to take into account the reason why the treatment has been discontinued. And if you look at registries, 50% of the reason why clopidogrel is prematurely discontinued is because of bleeding, surgical procedure, invasive procedure. And these events may easily explain the subsequent cardiovascular event. So clopidogrel discontinuation may just be an innocent by bystander in all these registries. Is there someone from a personal standpoint that you recommend continue their antiplatelet therapy for, for a longer period of time? Do sorry, you, sorry, say it again. Is there a patient in which you would continue the medications for longer than what this study would suggest you should do? Uh, for the time being, we have not seen any signal suggesting that a specific subset may benefit from prolonged as compared to short, at least according to the coverage that we pre-specified. That is what I can say at this stage. Of course, we are going to dig more and more in the data set to see whether there is a specific subset who may derive greater benefit, but for the time being, I'm not able to identify those patients. Okay, thank you very much.